Welcome to the A10C2 Tank Killer. I've seen quite a few questions on the interwebs over the past week since this update came out about how to get started in the A10 and it kind of reminded me of how confusing it was when I started trying to learn the original A10C in DCS. Um, there are obviously a ton of excellent resources on YouTube and in the forums from people that I would consider to be subject matter experts. Um, I am not one of those subject matter experts, but I thought it may be helpful to have a quick video just to help people get started, um, to go a little bit less in depth in the technical details and uh, just kind of uh, make it less confusing, hopefully, so that somebody can have a good platform to go into those more technical videos and posts and figure out, um, you know, the, the ins and outs. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do here. We're going to talk about sensors sensor of interest or soy and sensor point of interest or SPI briefly and then I'll discuss where I went from that foundation in trying to tame the beast that is the A10C Warthog or A10C2 tank killer so uh, thanks for joining me and we'll get right into it to start with we need to talk about sensors which are the foundation of employing the A10's weapons. What are sensors? This is a layman's definition, but anything that can be used to designate or lock a target, which includes those things in the list. Some sensors are physical things that uh, can be displayed on the MFCDs, and some of them are just um, things in the HUD or things on the plane, and it gets a little confusing, but it'll make more sense as time goes on. So on the outside of the plane, we have the AIM-9 Seeker is a sensor, the TGP is a sensor, uh, the MAV is a sensor, and this isn't outside the plane, but inside the cockpit, the HMCS is a physical sensor. Now here's the HMCS view from the pilot's view. Um, also inside the cockpit, we have the HUD, and either MFCD can be a sensor or a replication of a sensor. So on the left MFCD, we have the TAD, which can be used as a sensor. On the right MFCD, we have the TGP view from the, uh, the, the TGP hanging on the pylon. Um, also, uh, now on the left MFCD, we have the MAV seeker head view. Um, some pages on the MFCDs are not sensors. So here we have the Dismas, which is not a sensor. There's several pages that aren't sensors. So what is a sensor of interest? It's any sensor that you have designated as sensor of interest. So here we have the TGP, there's a not soy flag on it, so it is not sensor of interest. On the MAV, we don't have that message, so it is soy. Um, now on the HUD, it's a little bit different. You'll see an asterisk or a dot, which indicates that it is soy, and you'll also see not soy on the pages on the MFCDs. And the HMCS is similar to the HUD. You'll see a little dot or asterisk that indicates it is the sensor of interest. So now that we know what a sensor is and what a sensor of interest is, how do we switch between our different sensors to tell the plane what our sensor of interest is going to be? Um, we can switch between the screens and the HUD and the HMCS with the Cooley hat by default. It's going to be the Cooley hat function. Um, whatever your controls are, you can sort that out, but on the Thrustmaster Warthog, it is that hat right there. So what's a sensor point of interest or SPI? Um, this gets kind of complicated. I'm going to keep it basic. Essentially, it's that white pancake symbol there, but you can set it a number of different ways with different sensors, and it's going to look different. Sometimes you won't see that symbol depending on what sensor you're using, but it is essentially a point that you have designated using a sensor um, as your sensor point of interest. And you can make everything look at it, you can use it to employ weapons and things like that, but that's uh, getting into the realm of the more technical stuff where you're gonna have to start going and digging into other videos and documentation. So we'll leave it at that for now. Those are the very basics. That's sensors, sensor of interest, and barely, barely, barely sensor point of interest. And that's as far as I'm taking it. At this point, you'll need to start getting into more detail and more depth. And how do you do that? You could uh, go read the original A10C manual, or whenever the tank killer comes out with a manual, you could read that. Those are very lengthy. They have a lot of good information. I would recommend it, but it, it's not gonna be the fastest way to get you into the sim and having fun. Probably checking out YouTube videos is a great way to do it. 
um, more in-depth YouTube videos, I would recommend Bunyap Sims and the uh, the official videos done by Matt Wagner. Those are always really good. I know there are others out there, but those are the two that I'm most familiar with. So um, find the ones that work for you. Also, I've made this HOTAS function chart. This is an update of my A10C HOTAS function chart to incorporate the HMCS and the other changes. I'll put a link to this from the user files. There's a lot of these kinds of charts out there. Find the one that is intuitive to you. Don't necessarily use mine. Find the one that works for you, and I would encourage you to memorize it and play around in the sim with it. And aside from that, just jump in and do the original A10C training missions. If Tank Killer comes out with any official training missions, go for those and just do them repetitively. Um, find somebody to play with if you want, but uh, or make your own missions and just jump in and... and uh, you know, practice this stuff and, uh, and you'll eventually get more into the details and the technical stuff, um, that you need to know to have some fun in the A10C Warthog. So with that, I'll let you get to it and thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.